In the last lecture, uh, we looked at the concept of moral objectivism, and we looked at an argument for moral objectivism. Uh, in this lecture, we're still in Louis Vaughn's uh, Doing Ethics, Chapter 2, uh, but now we're going to be looking at subjectivism, relativism, and emotivism. Uh, so we'll begin with subjective relativism. Uh, so subjective rel relativism is the view that an action is right if one approves of it. Uh, so if we go back now to our distinction between perception and reality, the moral objectivist, if you remember, argues that our moral perceptions that we have are sort of like a moral sense in an analogous way to what we have five phys physical senses. And so if our moral perceptions are like a moral sense, then we can say that they correspond to a moral reality. Uh, so when we judge that building a house for Habitat for Humanity is a morally good thing to do, uh, that's not just a subjective per per perception that we have, but that perception actually corresponds to a moral reality. The subjectivist denies that. Uh, the only thing that exists are physical events that are happening, but our judgments of those events are something that are only in the eye of a beholder. And so what this means is that our moral perceptions are not the same things as sense perceptions. Moral perceptions are private, uh, moral perceptions can't be assessed by anyone else, and therefore a view or an action is right if one approves of it. So moral values are things that we invent, they're not things that we discover in the objective external world. Now the implications for this view is that everyone, in a sense, is morally infallible. Uh, what that means is whatever you think is morally right, uh, even if it differs, differs from what I say, whatever you think is right is right for you. And whatever I think is right is right for me. Whatever anyone else thinks is right is right for them. Everyone's moral values are infallible because we each determine what's moral uh, for ourselves. It's a private thing. Another implication is that genuine moral disagreements between individuals is nearly impossible. Uh, so it's not that we won't disagree. It's that we can't determine who's right when we do disagree if subjective relativism is correct, and moral judgments, therefore, are a matter of preference. Uh, so we can think of moral values sort of like uh, your tastes. Uh, some people maybe like eating sushi. Some people do not like eating sushi. And so people have different preferences in what they eat, and moral values to the subjective relativist, relativist is basically the same thing. Um, some people like uh, moral action X, whereas other people don't like moral action X, and it's uh, different values for different people, and that's totally okay. Uh, there's another form of relativism called cultural relativism. Now, this is the view that an action is right if one's culture approves of it. Uh, so, the difference between subjective relativism and cultural relativism is just how many people uh, agree with the position. So moral rightness and wrongness are relative to cultures. So if you have the majority of a culture, which is made up of different individuals who all think uh, serving for Habitat for Humanity is a morally good thing to do, uh, then those people are, are right, or that culture is right, um, because that's what that culture decided. Now, if you have another person who comes into that culture and they agree with that culture, that individual is right because they are agreeing with the culture that they are within. But, of course, if somebody comes in and, say, thinks that genocide is correct, that person, according to cultural relativism, would be wrong because the rest of the culture disagrees with them. Uh, those views don't align with the culture. Uh, but it's still relative because, I mean, if the entire culture decided that genocide, genocide was correct, uh, then... Uh, the values can change based upon what a culture says is correct. Uh, so now there is an argument for cultural relativism that uh, comes up in your chapter that I think is worth uh, considering. Uh, so the argument goes like this. If people's judgments about right and wrong differ from culture to culture, then right and wrong are relative to culture, and there are no objective moral principles. So now when you analyze an argument, what you want to do is you want to look at each step of this argument, so each premise, and you want to determine whether or not you think this premise is more likely true or more likely not. 
Once you get past pre premise one or step one, you can go to step two. People's judgments about right and wrong differ from culture to culture. So again, you want to analyze step one, step two. If you think both of those uh, steps are correct, then the conclusion is, therefore, right and wrong are relative to culture and there are no objective moral principles. Uh, and so this is an argument in favor of cultural relativism. Now, here are some of the implications if one accepts this argument. Uh, first, uh, you would have to accept that cultures are morally infallible. Uh, so now we're not talking about individuals, but we're talking about a culture. So if one culture uh, thinks that cannibalism is okay, then it is right. It's morally infallible for that culture. And another culture can disagree with that, uh, but the other culture has no bearing on what culture A should believe. So if culture B says, no, cannibalism is not okay, uh, well, culture B can decide that for its own culture, but it can't put those moral values on any other culture. Uh, and so each culture is morally infallible. Uh, cultural values cannot be criticized from outside the culture. Uh, that's another implication. Uh, social reformers from within a culture are by definition morally wrong. Uh, and so if anyone is living within a culture and they start to disagree with the norms that that culture is promoting, by definition, the social reformers must be wrong in that culture because they're going against uh, what the dominant culture is saying. Uh, and so the the most profound implication, I think, then, is that moral progress is virtually impossible if you embrace uh, this idea. And so these implications actually lead into a critique of this argument for cultural relativism. Uh, and the critique goes like this. From the fact that people differ, uh, from the fact that people in different cultures have different moral judgments, it does not follow that, therefore, the cultures uh, have different moral standards. Uh, so let's just consider a, another example to see what this uh, critique is getting at. If you say that the earth is round and someone else says that the earth is flat, does that disagreement show that there are no objective truths about the shape of the earth? And I think most people would say no. Uh, the fact that you believe something doesn't mean that your belief is therefore true. Uh, so if you believe that the earth is flat, that doesn't mean that your belief is true. Uh, what matters is what's object objectively true about the earth. In the same way, just because different cultures have different moral values, that does not mean that they ought to have different moral values. Uh, so it could be that some cultures are right and some cultures are wrong. Uh, to give another illustration, let's say we were in a math class and we were working on uh, a complicated problem, uh, a compl complicated problem in, uh, say, calculus. Well, if the problem is difficult enough and you're all working on this calculus problem together, uh, some of you might come up with different answers to the same question in math. Well, just because we come up with different answers does not mean that everyone's answer is correct. Uh, there is an objective reality that uh, our answers can be assessed by. And so this is a critique towards uh, Stace's argument that just because different cultures have different moral values, that doesn't mean that they ought to. Um, some might be right and some might be wrong. Uh, continuing this critique, uh, people may differ in their moral judgments, not just because they accept different moral principles, but it might also be the case that they have uh, divergent non-moral beliefs. Uh, so sometimes the reason why people disagree over things uh, isn't the moral principles uh, that they adhere to, uh, but they have other beliefs. So they could be religious beliefs. They could be any other ideological beliefs uh, that uh, help you understand why they actually disagree. Uh, so disagreements may arise simply because some people are wrong about the objective moral facts, which is what I said in the last slide. Uh, so these are critiques of Stace's argument. Uh, well, we might ask, well, what about tolerance? One of the reasons why some people are attracted to um, moral relativism is because they think it promotes the idea of tolerance. Uh, but we need to think about this for a moment. Does any form of relativism actually entail tolerance? Uh, 
Uh, so let's look just for a moment at the inconsistency of moral relativism. If tolerance is an objective moral value, so in other words, if you ought to be tolerant, then what that demonstrates is that cultural relativism must be false because some cultures don't promote tolerance. Uh, and so to promote tolerance, this would be an argument to say that you have to be a moral objectivist. Uh, if moral relativism is true, however, then intolerance can be justified just as easily as tolerance. Because remember, on moral relativism, uh, every moral view is infallible. And so if I want to be completely intolerant, then that is uh, perfectly justified for me, uh, just as much as the person who wants to be tolerant. So a moral relativist actually can't promote uh, tolerance. Uh, and then last, one must adhere to a moral objectivism to rationally affirm the principle of tolerance. Uh, so if you are attracted to moral relativism because you like the idea of tolerance, the objectivist will come back and say, well, if you want to promote tolerance as a good moral principle, then you must be a moral objectivist. And last, we have the view called emotivism. Now, emotivism is the view that moral judgments cannot be true or false because those views are just the expressions of an emotion or an attitude. And if they're just an expression of an emotion or an attitude, uh, they're, not, they're not making any statement about reality at all. Uh, this was promoted by uh, the logical positivists in the early, early 20th century, such as A.J. Ayer, uh, who his famous statement was this, moral statements like lying is morally wrong is logically equivalent to saying boo to lying. In other words, what Ayer is saying here is that when somebody is saying lying is morally wrong, all they're doing is expressing, a, expressing an emotion. And if you express an emotion, there's nothing true or false about it. It's not it's not a statement that can be analyzed. It's like saying boo or I don't like lying. Uh, it's just telling me what you're feeling right now. And the emotivist view is similar to the relativist view, uh, but it's actually making a stronger claim saying that moral values are just emotions that people have or just attitudes that people have. And those attitudes aren't even express, expressing truth claims at all. All they're doing is telling you about your uh, subjective feelings that you have. Now, the implications of this view are that moral disagreements are not disagreements about facts, uh, because on this view, there are no moral facts. All there are are differences of attitudes. Uh, there are also uh, no moral judgments, uh, because there are no um, moral facts to begin with. And there are no properties such as goodness or badness. And in this view, there's actually nothing that is good or bad. All there are are things that you like and things that you dislike, and that is the emotivist position. Uh, so this concludes uh, our second lecture through chapter two. Um, I would encourage you to, uh, after you've gotten done, if you haven't read the chapter yet, make sure that you read through it thoroughly and prepare yourself that way for uh, the quiz that's coming up this week.